Hello, hello. Nice to see you all. How's your Monday going? Hi, Jill. Great seeing you. Sandra, Kirk, Gordy, hello. Lee, hello. Corinna, great seeing you. Soraya, nice to see you too. Great having you. Uh, Kirk and John, Locke, and maybe Q's around here somewhere. Um... Hey, Lou. So I want to play something for you, and I want to focus a minute on a subtle feature in the background that we call delay. There's, there's two features of reverb. There's reverb and there's delay. Reverb, you can hear it on my voice. Um, well, I guess technically you can hear both of these things in my voice, but... When you go into a um, when you go into a hall, a theater, a cave, anything like that, and you say, "Hey," and you hear that trail of "Hey," and it just like lasts forever, that's what we call reverb. But when you hear the bounce back, what everybody wants to hear in a cave, where you go "Hey," and then you hear "Hey," come back at you, that's called delay. What it is, what reverb is, is um, your voice being projected out to, um, to an infinite number of distances along the wall and then brought back to your ears at different times, trailing later, 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 later. Now... You'll hear reverb until, until you hear the bounce back. There. You can hear it kind of go womp, womp, womp. Every time it renews itself, that is delay. That's when you have a specific frequency that hits the wall and comes back to you, and it's super powerful. Like, it's, it's the direct back. All reverb... Is, is when it hits the walls multiple times and comes back to you much, much softer and at many, many different times and just, you know, so they're basically one and the same thing, but delay is definitely more of a pointed reverb right there. So I want to show you how that can be used in different ways over this over this song. And you can hear that I have my delay turned up. They call it a multi-point delay. Five, six, seven. You can hear about seven different ones as they get lower and lower. A lot of times when you do delay, you break it off at the second one or the third one. But mine just gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Cool. I'm going to turn it much faster. So there's the riff. If I tap right along with it to the main beat, I'm 
gonna play one note and then I'm gonna silence it. Ready? play over the top of it, you're not even going to notice that that note's there. All it's doing is reinforcing what I'm playing. So listen closely and see if you can hear it anywhere. What happens is, is when I play on the beat, you don't notice it. But if I stop, you hear that? But if I start playing off the beat, so rather than playing quarter notes, let's say I play triplet notes. happening is the the bounce back is coming on a time where I'm not playing the notes and so now you're hearing a lot more notes of what I'm actually playing hear how cool that is I like that all right I'll change that up in a minute There's only reverb, but no delay. So listen to this. That's with the tap right there. Now, I 
I wanted to show you the difference here between um, swing eighth notes and and standard eighth notes, straight eighth notes. So this is uh, swing eighth notes. That da 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 da. da. So I'm gonna play a little solo piece with that. Versus straight eighth notes. So you'll notice that the straight eighth notes, they work kind of against the grain of the swing because normally you have one or the other, right? And then you have triplet eights, which you have to count this as one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Triplets. Swing eights. Straight eights. Hi, AJ. Now watch this. This is one of my favorite things here. Ready? Okay. We're going to take triplets. And right now, the reverb is landing on the one. You hear that? try and get the reverb, I'm mean, sorry, the delay to hit every four triplets. <laughs> so now if I hit just solid quarter notes, hear all the extra stuff that's going on <laughs> because I'm playing quarter notes which are timed to one two three one two three one two three one two three and the reverb is going every four so the first time it's like uh, it's really hard to do one two three and then I hit one and then it hits two and then I hit one and then it hit wait, it hits three and then it comes back around and hits together it's 
So when you want that like ambient, like what the hell's going on in the background, that's what you do. Here we go. lesson for today <laughs> hope you enjoy that stuff you can always just be like if you listen really closely when I'm soloing and everything I'm always pulling these different things into into the solos but a lot of times you wouldn't notice it unless we actually talk about it right hey Ruthie hi Rory wow I was just thinking about y'all last night wondering how you doing It gets better. It gets better. It might take it might take 18 or 20 years, but it gets better.
Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Lou. So let's go to one that's pra practically written note for note. Because I like doing that. I like playing songs that I try and do exactly the way they do it. And then I like doing songs where it's like nowhere close and everything in between. And it's important to practice each stage. Appreciate all that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the waterfall. Appreciate that. Hope you like that tune. I dig it. <laughs> Songs built off of nine chords. <clears throat> so, um, I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I try and take a, a a minute to talk about like the educational aspect of of what I play. You know, if if you're not into it, cool. Um, but if you can if you can understand that maybe somebody is, maybe somebody's into it, and uh, and I appreciate your support for you know for for that. So here, check this out. This isn't this is a major chord. If you Sing do re mi fa sol la ti do, and then instead of singing those, whatever they're called, um, the representative 
two letter words and you just sing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One and eight are the same, as is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Do at the beginning, do at the end. It's a repeating cycle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And no matter, no matter what, um, what was I going to say there? No matter what note the first note is, whether it's A, that would be A major. If I move up to A sharp, that would be A sharp major. Oh, whoops. Went too far. B major, C major, and so on. So by doing it numerically, we eliminate the need to, dis to know what the letters of the notes are. We think of them as positions. You're right, that's an octave. When it goes from one to eight, that is an octave. But in this math, we can also think of it as one to one. It freely exists as both things. So when I'm building a major chord, I use the first, third, and fifth notes of the scale in any order I choose. So this chord, being a major chord, is one, and then I move up to the fifth, one, two, three, four, five. I move to the next one, six, seven, one, then to the third, three, and then to the fifth, and then the one. And when I play all these notes, one, five, one, three, five, one, it makes a major chord. Because I can have as many ones, as many threes, as, as many fives as I want, but I have to have at least one. So if you think if an orchestra were to play a major chord, Maybe 50 people are playing the one, maybe 30 people are playing the three, and maybe 20 people are playing the five. But if those are the only three notes that they're playing, it's a major chord. What he's doing is he's adding the ninth note to that, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's some weird, not really difficult, but too long to explain now as to why do we call that a nine versus a two. And, and I'd definitely be happy to talk to you about that if you had interest. But when you take a major chord and you add the ninth to it, that is a major add nine chord. If it was a minor chord and you add a nine to it, that is a minor add nine. Notice that that's different from a minor nine or a major nine. We have to say add nine. And again, that goes beyond the scope of the time that we have to talk about. But just think of it with a major chord adding the nine or a minor chord adding the nine. So that. Those are. <laughs> Those are these cool. Right? It, it's, it's cool. They, they sound cool. Yeah. Yeah, Sandra, you would actually write it as A. And then, like where, where an apostrophe would go, they call that superscript. Um, it would be A add 9, as opposed to A9. Those are two different chords. You want to write a song over that progression? Hell yeah, yeah. You find the chords. You find the chords, Ruthie, and I will record you a progression switching all of those to... Uh, to major and minor nines, and, and you can go nuts with, with that. Yeah, it's fun stuff. Let's do some bluesy blues. Yep, exactly. Super fast explanation, since I have a few measures here. <laughs> um, 
Anything that has an extension on it called a 9, 11, or a 13 by default must have the seventh in it. You got to have that seventh in it to declare 9, 11, 13. If you don't have the seven, you have to call it add nine or sus two or sus four or something like that. Anyway. Today I'm temporarily going to call this song Why is it 100 degrees outside and the electric company charging me 600 bucks to not sweat? Blues. It, it, that, that's a long song name, but... It, it emphasizes how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> That's my frustration there, you ready? to have another song that's called like sweat dripping down my arms <laughs> blues <laughs> 
damn right. That's exactly what it is, Sandra. comes from the five stages of summer. <laughs> this would be acceptance or defeat. This is, my mouth is so dry, I can't talk. <laughs> 